I want you to find your places there just for a minute this morning. And uh, we're going to look at some scripture here this morning. Everybody, find your place there in John chapter 3. And uh, what I'd like to do is give you this scripture, the most probably the most uh, well-known, most quoted scripture in the Bible. John 3, 16. Too hot? I can't believe it. You finally agreed with it. All right, man, it'll... Uh, it'll cool off in here. The heat's not on, so I don't want to turn the air on unless you're just real, real hot. So we'll just leave it just like it is. Suffer with me here just a minute. Maybe it's so hard when it's humid outside and it's kind of warm. You can get it too cold just like that or too hot just like that. So I hope that you'll... Uh, be comfortable there, but the main thing I want you to do this morning is be still and be quiet. Now, the message this morning, if you'll come back tonight, it'll be a lot different. You know, last Sunday night was a lot different than Sunday morning, and it usually is. Um, What I want to do this morning, um, the Lord gave me this thought the other day, and I've been writing some things down on it, not a whole lot. So if you're expecting a great, wonderful sermon this morning, it's probably ain't going to be one. If you're expecting... One of those sermons that are just just goes on and on and on in your life. This might not be that either. But I tell you what, if you'll listen, if you'll listen this morning, I believe that what I've got to say might help somebody in here this morning as much as any sermon that you've heard in a long time. So if you'll give me attention just for a few minutes, it's going to be real short. I want to preach to you on the subject this morning, some things God has never seen. Some things God has never seen. Please listen to me. You say, Brother Danny, God can see everything. Yeah, He can. But I'm going to preach about some things God has never seen. Look at your Bible in John 3.16. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Some things that God has never seen. You know, I heard about a preacher one time who only preached on this Scripture. The whole time he ever preached, his whole ministry, started preaching at 16 years old. His name was Henry Morehouse. When he was 16... He preached his first sermon. His text was John 3.16. He felt like he didn't get it done, so he preached it again and again and again. He died in early manhood, and every time he preached, he preached from this text over 600 times. Outlines that he had on that one Scripture. There's a hundred different ways, 600 for him, that he went from John 3.16. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning, people. There's more stuff wrapped up in that one verse of Scripture than every bit of literature in this world that is not Scripture. Nobody's ever been able to expound it. Nobody's ever been able to get all there is in it out. Nobody's ever been able to exhaust that famous word of God that said, For God so loved the world. You can't fathom it. You can't comprehend all the love. Our preacher used to get up and say this. He'd say, For God so loved the world. He said, Nobody knows how much love is wrapped up in the little word so. How much did God love the world? He so loved the world. How did God love the world? He so loved the world. He so loved it that He done this and that. And He proved His love by what He did. For God so loved the world. Nobody can tell us how much love is in that word so. How much did God love us, preacher? He so loved us. He so loved us. Boy, I want to preach about that this morning. I want to preach about some things God has never seen. I'm saying to you this morning, I'm going to say first of all this morning, God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. Did you hear me? God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. We get to thinking sometimes that our situation is hopeless. We get to thinking sometimes that it's always got to be this way. We get to thinking sometimes I'm in a mess 
and I'll never get out. We get to thinking sometimes it must have just been meant for me to have a miserable life. It must not have been meant for me to be happy. It must not have been meant for me to ever get anywhere. It must not have been meant for me to ever be blessed. It must not have been meant. I'm going to tell you this morning, on the authority of this book, God never looked down from heaven on this earth and saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, you don't know my situation. No, I don't. But I know one thing. God never seen a situation that He couldn't change. Amen? Down just a tire, Brother Mike. Just a hair. I'm going to tell you something, Brother. God never... What's a tire? Uh, it's a, something that grows with wheat. I'm going to tell you what, Brother. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. Amen? Ha, a, a tire is a cross between tad and hair. Just a tad, just a hair. Tire. Amen. Listen, God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. If people get concerned enough, you say, Brother Danny, my marriage is on the rocks. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, my family's falling apart. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, I'm in bad shape financially. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, I'm discouraged. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, is there someone out there for me that I could marry and be happy with? God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. You say, Brother Danny, I'm already married and I'm miserable. God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. I'm telling you, He never did. We look in the Bible and we see what could be and what seemed to be impossible situations impossible situation. We see people in the battles in worse shape than you are and God done something about their situation. We see them people in Exodus. You know there in the book of Exodus, God's people had been in bondage for 400 years. 400 years. They had served Pharaoh and Egypt's bondage. They didn't think they'd ever get out. Somebody said, how long has it been this way? 400 years. You ever remember it being any different? No. Your grandpa ever remember it being any different? No. Does our grandpa ever remember it being different? No. Does her grandpa ever remember being different? No. 400 years. Hey, God said, look down. He said, I can do something about that situation. Are you listening to me this morning? They've been that way for 400 years. Somebody said, well, Brother Danny, I've been in a mess like this for five years. They've been in it 400. Somebody said, Brother Danny, it's been like this 10 years. They've been in it 400. And God's people got to get down and they started saying, Oh, God, do something about this. Oh, God, do do something about this. And about that time, God let a little baby boy be born by the name of Moses. They didn't know it, but right there under Pharaoh's nose was growing up God's answer to their prayers. Just because it ain't happened yet does not mean God had not heard you and does not mean God had not helped you. Listen, this is a message of encouragement to shine in light. Baptist Church, are you saved this morning? God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. And right there underneath their nose was growing up the deliverer called Moses. And when Moses was come to age, he killed the Egyptian and slew him in the, and hit him in the sand. And you know when he hid that boy in the sand and he took off running out there on the back side of the desert and when he did, God waited till the time was right and the bush caught on fire and God spoke to Moses through the bush and then God sent Moses back to Pharaoh and you know the plagues come on Egypt. All that was God changing their situation. And boy, them Egyptians would get over God's people and they'd say, you bunch of people, you bunch of Christians, we hate your guts. You're going to serve us from now it ain't never going to be no different. Things are always going to be this way. But I'm telling you, there was a God up in glory that was a fixing to change their situation. And ladies and gentlemen, this morning, right now, while you and I are sitting there, and you're sitting in your seat, and I'm sitting up here preaching, right now, God is in heaven working on your behalf. If you've trusted Him, and if you prayed about it, and if you meant business when you prayed, right now, He's got a plan to change your situation situation. You say, well, Brother Danny, I don't want it changed. Well, you can sit right there and you die then. But when you start wanting it changed, when you start wanting it different, when you get sick of it, when you get sick of being beat up by the devil, something inside you is going to rise up and pray and God will change your situation. But about that time He sent the last plague and the death angel came through Egypt and them boys started dying like that and Pharaoh and them couldn't run them out of town said, get out, we're sick of you. We don't want you in here no more. Get out of here. And God's people run out there to, to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea party like that. They didn't go through on mud. They went through on dry ground. When God delivers you, He delivers you right. 
When He gets you out, brother, He gets you out. When He helps you, He helps you. Hey, when God heals you, it don't come back on you when you go out the door. When God answers your prayer, it don't cave in on you the next day. I'm telling you, He never saw a situation that He couldn't change. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, I'm encouraging. I'm trying to encourage you this morning. He never saw a situation that He couldn't change. All right, on the count of three, we're having all the babies quieter out. One, two, duct tape. Thank you. There's people in here that desperately need to hear what I've got to say. There are marriages depending on what I've got to say this morning through the Holy Ghost using it. There are people, Christian, young people's lives who go one way. It is very important everybody hear what I've got to say. I'm not just up here to hear myself talk. God never saw a situation He couldn't change. You know what He did with Joseph? Joseph was sold into bondage. And that old boy Joseph was down in that pit and he was in a mess and his brothers went and told his daddy that somebody killed, or a beast killed him and showed him his coat with blood all over it. Joseph was in a mess. He is an impossible mess. You ever been in a mess? You ever felt like it's over? You ever felt like God's through me? God's never going to use me? I've messed up everything I've ever tried to do. I've been a failure all my life. Everything I touch messes up. Why why don't God just kill me? I'll tell you why God don't. Listen, if you're living, if you're breathing, God's got something you need to be doing. If He hadn't had something you to do, He'd have done killed you and took you on to heaven. And I'm telling you, He wants to change your situation. He never saw a situation that He couldn't change. I was talking to a preacher last night. Some preacher down here called me. And he's telling me about something. He, they, they had somebody had me on the internet, just giving me down the road from Ohio, somebody up in Ohio had put stuff on the internet about me. And I thought, praise God! Every time they do that, the Lord blesses me some more. So I'm expecting a blessing today. And uh, I, I didn't, it didn't hurt my feelings or nothing. I'm used to that. And I'm gonna tell you what, boy, I, I'm like I'm like that bumper sticker I seen uh, uh, the other day. I seen a bumper sticker that said, "Where there's a will, put me in it." <laughs> Amen. That's a good philosophy. Amen. That's a good philosophy to have. Hallelujah. Somebody might feel led to do that this morning. Woo. Amen. Right, don't put me in it, but put the church in it. Y'all son leaving you will, put the church in your will. Amen. Don't leave it to your kids. They're all hoping you'll die pretty soon anyway. Fool them, brother. Leave it to God. But I'm going to tell you what, brother. I, I, I saw another bumper sticker. This ain't going to do the message, but let me tell you about it. We're waiting on y'all. Come on now. we got to have it quiet in here. Let's go. Move it, move it, move it. Hup, hup. One, two, three, four. Hup. One, two, three, four. Cast the devil out. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, amen. I feel for him, bless the heart. I'd hate to have him like that. I've had, I've had, him, had him like that. So I'm not mad at him. But you know what? I used to have this truck, and I had people out. I saw a bumper sticker the other day and said this. Yes, this is my truck. No, I will not help you move. <laughs> That's good, ain't it? Amen. You know, it's all you that's got trucks. Everybody comes over and they're real friendly to you when they want to move. <laughs> Bought me a trailer over here. Will you help me move? Uh, but anyway, listen, that ought to be our attitude is, yeah, where there's a wheel, put me in it. Amen? Now, I'm going to tell you something. God has an endless supply of blessings. And He'll give them to you, brother. If you're ready, you say, I'm a candidate. Amen? I'm a candidate. I want to present myself to the Lord today and say, Lord, you got any blessings you don't, you want to get rid of today? You're looking for somebody to throw it out, dump it out on me. I'll take it. He never saw a situation that he couldn't change. You say, you just don't know my husband. Yeah, but I know the Lord and I know what he can do. You just don't know what a jerk I'm there. No, I don't. But I'll tell you one thing. God, it may not be perfect. I mean... It may not be a perfect situation, but I never saw a situation that God couldn't change. Joseph was down there in Egypt, and boy, he sold him into slavery. He served all them years. But you know what? God was changing his situation. He put him up to the right hand of Pharaoh. That old boy wound up dispensing the corn and feeding his brothers. And you know, his brothers would come to him, and he'd just mess with them, man. He'd just mess with them. And he'd say, uh, uh, go on back. They'd get halfway home, find their money in their sack. They'd come back. He'd say, bring your little brother with you. They went and told Daddy, he wants a little brother. You ain't taking a little brother. You done killed Joseph. He's got him killed. I, listen, I, won't, I, won't, I ain't going to let my little baby, uh, little Benjamin go. And they said, well, he won't give us no corn if you don't let Benjamin go. Finally, Benjamin went down there. They put the money in his sack. He messed with them and messed with them and messed with them. Finally, the old man, all of them, wound up down there. And God changed their situation. Joseph was happy. They were happy. God blessed Jacob. Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and the whole situation turned out right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you listen to me this morning. Don't give up on God because God ain't give up on you. God still sees you. He still knows your situation. There's some of you here this morning, the devil's beat you down. He's beat you down and he's beat you down. And you've just kind of just called a peace with the devil and said, All right, devil, I just give up. You'll leave me alone. I'm challenging you this morning to look up again and say, Dear God, dear God, will you help me? And God never saw a situation that he couldn't change. Some of you people in here this morning, the Lord laid on my heart to tell you. Some of you here this morning, you just gave up. You said, it ain't never meant for me to be happy. I'll never have a happy home. I'll never have a husband. I'll never have a wife. I'll never have a good job. I'll never have a decent place to live. I'm here to tell you this morning, don't you give up! Don't you give up! You keep praying! God never saw a situation that He couldn't change. Jump up this morning and say, It ain't here yet, but glory to God, it's coming. It's not happened yet, but thank God it's going to happen. God knows what He's doing. He's still on the throne. He's still sovereign. We're not, but hallelujah, He is. He never saw a situation that He couldn't change. Let me tell you something else this morning. God never saw a saint that He wouldn't help. God never saw a saint that He wouldn't help. Some things God ain't never seen. God never saw a saint that he couldn't help and wouldn't help. Listen, the devil will defeat you. There's people sitting in here this morning, some of you young people. I ain't stupid. I can tell by looking at you. Some of you defeated. You try to live right for a while, you mess up. You try to live right for a while, then you mess up. You come to the altar, you ask forgiveness, then you mess up again. You come to the altar, you ask forgiveness, then you mess up again. You say, well, maybe I didn't really mean it. I mean, maybe I'm not really saved. Well, all that is is the devil trying to beat you up and beat you down and make you uh, forget about it and just give up. I heard just yesterday of a preacher, a good preacher, good preacher. He's been through some trouble, been through a divorce, been through some bad things, and God knows my heart goes out to him. That's discouraging. One of the most discouraging things a Christian can ever, ever go through is a divorce. I mean, the devil will jump on you. Your family will jump on you. The world will jump on you. And to beat it all, half of the church people will jump on you and kick you and say, well, you must have done this or this wouldn't have happened and beat you down. Listen, brother, if you're not careful, if you're not careful, it'll get you down. This preacher friend of mine, I heard yesterday, they said he just, I said, I'm throwing in a towel. I'm quitting. I ain't even going to fool with it no more. Religion's caused me too much trouble. And I told him, he said, don't you think that's right? And I said, religion might have caused you a lot of trouble, brother, but there ain't nothing wrong with Jesus. And Jesus is still there. Jesus is still real. Jesus is still right. I find no fault in Him. If you'll keep your eyes on Him, brother, I never, and He never saw a saint that He couldn't help. He'll help you today. You say, well, brother Danny, I've messed up so many times, I don't believe God's, uh, I believe God's all done me. That's a lie. That's a lie. For God so loved the world. He loved you. I don't care what you've done. Let me tell you something about God's love, and I'll say more about it in a minute. His love is unconditional. He loves you the same right now as He did a hundred years before you was born, or He will ten years from now. He'll love you the same then. See, we think God's like we are. You know, people, if you offend them, they say, all right. If you offend them again, all right. If you offend them again, I'm I'm through with you, I'm done with you. That's the way we are. But thank God He's not like that. Thank God He's not like that. Hallelujah, He's not like that. There's been a many a time, a many a time that I've crawled up the altar that didn't feel like I was worthy to stand up. And I said, dear God, dear God, dear God. And I confessed and I forsook my sin. And the precious love and grace and glory of the Almighty God come down and flooded my soul. And boy, He set me on top of the mountain once again. I'm telling you, never saw a saint. He wouldn't help. He'll help you this morning. He'll help you this morning. We got people categorized. We think, well, so and so, these good people, they don't ever do nothing wrong. They just got it hid real good. Let me tell you, I know some of them good people. I'm telling you, brother, we're all sinners. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we ought to just keep coming and just keep coming back to the well of grace. Great is its power. Great is its grace. And just keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. It never runs dry. He never runs out. He never says that's it. He never says I'm tired of fooling with you. He said if you'll come, His hand is out. Stretch still. Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, brother, there's room at the cross. Every one of you, all you teenagers this morning, ought to be in here this morning just saying, Dear God, dear God, dear God, help me. He never saw a Satan. He wouldn't help. Mm. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I'm glad He'll help you this morning. I'm about ready to take a run and spell. Thanks be unto God. I, he never saw a saint he didn't want to help. He'll help you today. He'll help you today. He never saw a saint. The devil, what happens is, the devil will get you down. He put his foot on your neck. And he'll convince you that there ain't no use in you praying no more. He said, you've sinned too much. You've made too big of a mess. God don't want nothing to do with you. Everybody's judging you. Nobody likes you. Poor little you. And that's the devil talking to you. One of the bus kids said something. Said, well, I ain't going to that church. People judge me. Well, you poor, deceived nut. They judge you at world. They judge you at home. They judge you at school. That's the devil tricking you. You judge them. You're judging them when you say that. Amen? Don't let the devil use stuff like that on you to knock you out of church. You crazy? Get in here and climb up to the throne and crawl up under the altar and say, God, help me. He'll help you. He'll help you. He helped Hezekiah. Oh, Hezekiah thought he was dying. He was dying. He was dying. He said, you're going to die. Set your house in order. And he turned his face to the wall and said, Dear God, help me. The Lord said, 15 more years. I was coming down the road this morning. <laughs> it was, had been raining. And it was foggy. And I just got to think, I said, Thank God we got one more Sunday. We're never promised another one, but we got today. Praise God. This is the last Sunday you ever see me stand up here and preach, and I die tonight. You just remember this. Thank God He gave me this one. He give you this one. We may never have another one, but thank God we've got today. Amen? He never saw a saint that He wouldn't help. I'm going to say lastly this morning, God never saw a sinner that He didn't love. For God so loved the world, He never saw a sinner that He didn't love. I like the song that said, Oh, love of God, how rich and pure. How marvelous. To write, if, if, if we the, the, the ocean with ink would fill and and that every man a scribe by trade, and, and every man took his quill, you couldn't dip the ink out of the ocean and write on the sky the love of God. How much God loves us. All the books in the world couldn't contain the love that God has for us. You say, God, yes, He does. Sin is big, but God's love is bigger. Amen. How big is the love of God, preacher? It's mighty, mighty, mighty big, brother. It's mighty big. They said it's too big. G. Campbell Morgan said this is a text I've never attempted to preach on. He said, I've gone around it and around it. It's too big. It's John 3.16. He said, when I've read it, there's nothing else to say. If we knew how to read it to produce a sense of ears of the people, there would be nothing else to preach about. The love of God is so great. Amen. The breadth of it is God so loved the world. The length of it is He gave His only begotten Son. The depth of it is that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish. The height of it is that I shall have everlasting life. God is the greatest love. So love is the greatest degree. The world is the greatest number. That He gave was the greatest act. His only begotten Son is the greatest gift. That whosoever was the greatest invitation. Believeth was the greatest simplicity. In Him was the greatest person. Should not perish is the greatest deliverance. But the greatest difference. How? The greatest certainty. Everlasting life would be the greatest possession. There are two striking things on the text. When God loves, He loves the world. When He gives, He gives His Son. You can't love no bigger than the world, and you can't give no more than your Son. When God loves, He loves the whole world. When He gives, He gives His own Son. Nothing cheap about Him. He loves the biggest. He gives the best. You can't beat Him. You might as well just come to Him. He never saw a sinner that He didn't love. The love of God watched Adolf Hitler fall into hell, and he was reaching out to him as he was going down. See, we got the idea that there's no hope for people like... Let me tell you something. God loves Charles Manson this morning the same as He loved me and you. Charles Manson can be saved if he'd repent of his sin and turn to Jesus Christ. Oh, preacher, there's no hope for him. Listen, if there's no hope for him, it's his choice. It ain't God's. Amen? It's his doings and not God. If Marilyn Manson would come to God this morning and walk in that door and come down here and say, Preacher Danny, I heard your message about me, 
and I've been winning souls through that mess that you tricked me and you've been using me to win souls all over the United States and I might as well get a reward for it. I'd say, bow down right here, sis, and we'll pray for you. I'd say, listen, I'd gather around him, boys, and we'll pray, and brother, if he put it, she, him, shim, put its faith in the Lord, brother, they'd come up a save, whatever. Amen? And there's a soul in there that God loves. There, one time, we saw, I said, Marilyn Manson might be saved. And my, Carrie was over to her, she said, he better not be. I said, Carrie, if he puts his face, she said, I'm going to be mad if I get to have a nerve, Marilyn Manson. We've tried to do right. And I said, see, that's the grace of God. That's the love of God. We, we think good people go to heaven, bad people go to hell. I got news for you, buddy. There ain't no good people. And the best we can do is filthy. Listen, I've been trying to live right since I was 18 years old, and I disappoint myself every day. I let my every day. It seems like the longer I'm saved, the sorrier and meaner I get. And the longer I'm saved, the more I appreciate that He loved me. Before He ever knew me, before He saved me, He loved me. He never saw a sinner He didn't love. He loves you too this time. Listen, if the love of God can't break your stony heart, there ain't no hope for you. Amen? The gospel in miniature is John 3.16. For God so loved the world. He loves you. He loves you. God never saw a sinner that He didn't love. As Charlemagne and Nero... Every wicked person in this world lay there dying. God's love was just like this. Saying, come and I'll help you. I'll help you. The love of God, how rich and pure, the song said. Greater far than tongue or pen can tell. I'm going to tell you this morning, he never saw a sinner that he didn't love. God never saw a situation that he couldn't change. God never saw a saint that He wouldn't help. I'm not going to stand up here this morning and say, if you run down here at the altar and pray that your situation is going to be fixed when you get home. I'm not saying that. The children of Israel stayed down there a long time. But I'm telling you, God did hear them. And God did finally deliver them. And He'll help you too. You know what I do when I get in the jam? I push myself toward Him. And that's what you need to do. Push yourself. Because yourself don't want to go. Your flesh resents it. Your flesh, your flesh rebels. Push yourself. Make yourself. Pray and push yourself toward God. And say, God, deliver me. And the Bible says it. He never saw a saint that he wouldn't help. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head.